Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us this evening for our very first Aspa Google Hangouts. Uh, we've got a collection of fantastic teachers here with us tonight to uh, share their teaching practice and pedagogy around using technology in the classroom. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity for us in Tasmania and replicating what's been done in Victoria with a couple of outstanding PE teachers over there and, and heads of IT. Hopefully this will lead us into the future of professional learning and something that uh, ATCHPA hopes to offer to its members from here on in. Uh, so I'll just introduce us all. We have Anita Welsh joining us tonight uh, from Ogilvy High School in Hobart, Tasmania. The way of Anita. Uh, we have Tim Hordle. Tim is a teacher from Ogilvy High School as well. Uh, he's a, so an English teacher but uh, heavily into using IT. We've got Kai Vincent uh, from Hewitt High School teaching PE and outdoor ed down there. Thanks for joining us, Kai. And from the University of Tasmania, we have the legend himself, uh, Vaughan Krukchank, who will be uh, guiding us through some stuff later on. So, Anita is going to take us through some work with archery and video feedback. Uh, Kai is going to have a look at Evernote and how he uses that in the classroom. Uh, Vaughan's going to look into Socrative, how he uses that. Tim has an iPad game that he uses for collaboration, and I'm going to screen share my iPad and have a look at how I use iDocio in a classroom. So we're going to keep everything to about four to five minutes and roll through it, and uh, we'll see how we go. So Kai is going to kick us off this evening. So thanks very much, Kai, and uh, over to you. Okay. Um, look, I hate to disappoint everyone, but um, my use of Evernote is, is not particularly related to, to in-classroom stuff, but it's been a tool that we've been using down at Huonville for a while, and it's just the most awesome tool for organising um, a lot of um, my work that I'm doing. I'm in an AP role down there at the moment, and we're doing um, a whole lot of school reform around um, um, school improvement, and I found uh, uh, the Evernote stuff just to be really, really quite useful for organising lots of information from everywhere. So I'll just share my screen for you in a second, and I'll give you a bit of a rundown on, on what it's all about. So basically, it, the Evernote um, platform is a free program, but there's also a premium version of it, and it's essentially a tool that allows you to collect and um, collate information from any source that you can possibly imagine. Um, the screen that you've got up in front of you at the moment is a whole lot of research that, that I've collected over the time. Um, um, I've had a bit of a, uh, a history of having the messiest desk in the entire school and probably the country as well. But this has allowed me to, to get rid of some of that mess a little bit and organise everything that I've got. So to give you an example of some of the things that you can collect and create as notes in this uh, in Evernote, um, you can uh, you you can upload photos, you can upload um, photos of text, you can uh, um, articles, you can use it as a word processor and record meeting notes, you can capture research papers, you can capture PDFs, um, bills, personal bills from your your own home, and you can create a, a paperless uh, office. Um, all of those things. Um, the best tool that I've found that's within this program is an attachment that you add to um, Google Chrome or a, a, another browser, and it's a, it's a clipper. So basically, when you come across an article or a, a, a research paper that you like the look of, you click the clicker, and it will um, clip the article to your thing, uh, your, your Evernote account, and you can basically then view it on any device that you've got uh, Evernote installed to, so on your iPads, on your um, desktops, on your, um, um, your, your mobile phone, um, and you can view it and, and do all sorts of things with it. Um, uh, Evernote, um, you, you need a way of being able to organise all that stuff once it gets on here, and the most useful way of doing it is by using these tags on the left-hand side uh, that you can see down the screen. So tagging and com coming up with a really good system to tag um, your your notes that you have coming up into Evernote is really important um, and allows you to then search things. The other really cool feature of it is um, basically the, the search feature at the top. So any note that you've clicked to Evernote is searchable by text 
and that includes things like um, handwritten notes. So if you were to make a handwritten note um, in an exercise book or something and then take a photograph of it, it will then, your search function in the program will then text recognize your handwritten text and you'll be able to find things that way. Um, I don't use that feature a lot, but I'd certainly use the tags to, to find things. It's just uh, uh, coming across really good stuff on the internet or, or finding articles that you like um, and then being able to click them and have them in one place. When you want to refer back to them in a, in a staff meeting or whenever you've always got them there and you don't have to go digging through the mess on your desk to be able to locate them. Um, there are people, quite a few people, teachers and educators that have used Evernote in classrooms, but my use of it so far has been just to, to coordinate and organise um, all sorts of bits and pieces of information that I've managed to collect over the last sort of 12 months or so, and that's been the most useful uh, use of it for me. Um, it just says you're having to bookmark things, um, like if you find uh, a really good article on the net, you're not bookmarking it, but you're actually clipping it and then it's viewable from anywhere um, that you, you've got a device which is really quite handy. Um, the only thing that um, I need, oh, you need to be a little bit aware of is that the, um, our TAS DOE policies have certain restrictions on what you can and can't put up on a, on a cloud sort of storage setup, um, so you've got to be careful. Like I'd really like to use this this as um, a, meet, a meeting note tool, so any time I would meet with a student or with a parent or whatever, I'd really like to be able to re make a record of it in here and then have basically treat it like a um, uh, like a diary. Um, but unfortunately, with the policies the way they are at the moment, you just need to be really careful as to what you actually upload and put on there. So sensitive stuff can't really go up there, but for general information, it's great. Um, it's just a fantastic tool and it, the more you use it, the better it becomes. Um, the more stuff you get onto your, your particular account, the more useful you find it. Um, that's about it, Coe. I, I guess any questions on Evernote? Fantastic. Thanks, Kai. That was, uh, that's absolutely terrific. I've learnt a fair bit there. Um, do the tags come with the, uh, the standard version or do you have to get the premium? Oh, no, the tags you create yourself so that you can get that on the free version, but you just got to think about pretty cleverly how you're actually going to create your your tags to make them useful. And the more tags you put in the actual, the, the better off it is. Um, and I've sort of started to, to get it and I'll cut a few tags and add a few tags and it's just a really good way of doing it. Yeah. Uh, how many notebook stacks have you got? Do you use a lot of that or do you use the tags mainly? The, the tags, so if you um, organise your, all of your notes by notebook, you're limited to putting a, a note or an article or whatever it is into one notebook, which is a bit restrictive. So if you use tags, you can tag an article with multiple tags, which then makes it a little bit more useful and searchable. So typically, a research article that you pull up, you'll, you'll tag the, the topic or the content. Um, they are the, um, the author usually and makes it easy to find stuff written by particular people and then maybe even what you're actually going to intend on using it for, so who, who your audience is when you're going to refer back to it, um, full staff, senior staff, whatever it might be. Yeah, brilliant. Ah, very good. Well, thanks Kai, that was uh, absolutely fantastic. So there should be people out there that get a fair, a fair bit out of that one. Um, very hard to speak with four five minute time limit, I can tell you. So uh, yeah, excellent stuff. All right, we'll um, we'll switch over to Anita now, and uh, she's going to guide us through some video feedback uh, techniques she used uh, with some archery. So good on you, over to you, Anita. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say first up that uh, this is something really new to me using some feedback. Um, in my teaching, so the video feedback, so it was um, a real trial and error. Um, I'm just going to share my screen to get to a presentation for you. Alright, so um, a lot of the technology was all incidental, so um, initially it was just all about the devices for recording and some YouTube clips. Um, the other things I hadn't really thought too much about and progressed um, as I found a need for them. So use some devices such as iPads and their iPhones, YouTube clips, um, ended up going into some Google accounts um, for the students, some Google Drive, some QR codes and some Google Forms. So um, it developed 
uh, quite quickly. Um, the task that the students needed to do was to watch a skilled archery performer on YouTube. They had to go then outside and perform the skill, um, an archery shot three different times and have a partner video them from three different angles, so from each side and behind. Once everyone in their group had um, performed the skill, they needed to go back and watch the performance um, and then give feedback on their own performance and receive feedback from a peer um, based on watching their performance. Once they'd uh, done that process, they needed to complete the skill again three times, so the same three angles and video it and comment on any improvements and future focuses for the um, improvement of the skill. Um, as I said, it was a fair bit of trial and error. So the things that worked well were the students were actually really good at um, just getting in there and having a go at performing the skill. Um, the girls were also really good at filming the skills, so they were more than happy to play around with the technology. Um, their students' ability to give feedback was fairly basic. Um, and the concept of the task, um, I think, worked well. What needed improvement from all of that um, was the student access to and the willingness to use uh, their devices. So we had a few issues with, um, I guess, shortage of devices and things like that, and having only um, a couple of iPads being accessed at the school just made that a little bit tricky. Um, so that was something that we needed to focus on for the future. Um, I uh, worked out that I needed to do some really explicit teaching of how to give feedback and that would have really helped um, the students in what they needed to do. I did it just um, expected a little bit too much of them at um, that point in time. Needed to figure out a less distracting way to view the videos. So um, in a nutshell, each group had about six or seven students in it and they needed to share the one device to um, look at their performance. So. Um, as far as time was concerned, it wasn't really um, an efficient way to, to view that. So that was just some things I thought I needed to uh, work on. So for the next part of it, tweak the task a little bit. So I needed to figure out a way to share the archery videos. And uh, after talking to Anthony, racking our brains a little bit, we needed to work out um, a way to not share them publicly because we only wanted the girls to see them. So we managed to upload all the videos onto Google Drive and had each of the students create um, a Google account so we could get them to access those. So that was quite an um, a effort in itself. We then created um, unique QR codes for each student video and I'll speak about how I managed to do that um, in a minute and then shared the videos with the students either by a QR code so they could scan it onto their device or they could, uh, we could just share the link to it um, via email. email. Uh, what I found improved from this was the student's ability to view their own performance, so they could focus just on their um, own performance. They didn't have to worry about anyone else's. They could re-watch it as many times as they wanted without being interrupted by other students. Um, it was a less distracting environment, so I took the viewing of uh, the videos into a classroom. So um, it was quieter, um, the students were a bit more focused being in a classroom. There was more time on task and less student behaviour issues because they could focus just on their own video. And what came from this um, is the girls managed to give some quality feedback and had a greater understanding of what they actually needed to do to improve their um, archery. I've just got a couple of shots here of um, what some things look like for me. So the Google Drive, I would have had uh, 20 students with three videos each all shared into the Google Drive. With the QR code set up, my experience with QR codes um, is just through, um, I guess, an app on a, a device. Um, and I wanted a quicker way to be able to produce those QR codes, so I did a fair bit of um, Googling and came across this website called The Next Web, so it's worth checking out. Um, you can view um, a YouTube clip or a video um, on bulk QR code creation. So from that, um, if you manage to get onto that site, you can just look down here and there's a, a link where you can view a, um, an actual Google Doc. So the QR codes are um, produced through a Google Doc. So I've managed to use that to produce um, a cl class set of QR codes, so um, personalised for each student. So that saved me a lot of time and um, it's something I now use for um, other things when I need bulk QR codes, so certainly something to um, for everyone to look into. 
Um, just a little screenshot of when the girls were asked to give some feedback. They had some pictures that they could link back into, some instructions, um, and they just had a bit of a checklist. Um, for this particular task, they just did that on paper. Uh, didn't want to completely overload them with technology. Um, and when our um, archery was finished, they had a Google form feedback that they needed to do, which they accessed on their own devices with um, a QR code. So um, a whole lot of technologies um, used there. The one thing um, that I'll add to that, and I'll just stop sharing my screen. Cool. Um, is the girls actually had an opportunity to um, go back out for another practical lesson and produce um, or um, perform the archery skills again. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't there for that lesson and they had a relief teacher um, as well as a teacher in training who was with us in the first lesson. And uh, the, the comment that the teacher in training said was that she could see huge notice in um, the skills of the students. So. I think um, by doing that feedback obviously has that fantastic um, outcome. So it's something that I'll definitely build upon um, this semester with my new grade 9 class when we do archery. So that's all from me, Kawi. Um, if you've got any other questions, fire away. I'll just mute. Thanks, Nate. That's uh, fantastic. I reckon that's really good. I'll just um, unmute the other mics of everybody, see if they have a question to ask. There we go, we're all, all back on now. Uh, any questions there from you guys? Uh, not so much a question, but a, a comment. Oh, I think I was actually at that lesson um, that you were away for, Anita, and the, and the girls were absolutely putting me to shame with their archery skills. It was quite entertaining. <laughs> I think they were popping a fair few balloons. Indeed, they were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, excellent work, Nate. And that's only uh, early days. That was a while ago now at school. So there's um, been some evolution in our video feedback tripod and the soon-to-be projector and wall in the gym. So things are, things are on the way. Good starting cool. point. Good starting point. That's right. So we'll, uh, we'll throw to you, Tim, if that's okay, if you're ready. I guess the technology I wanted to share is a game that I've been using with my grade 9 students. So I'll get up a, a, a screen share for you. Ooh. Except that's not the button at all. Uh, here we go. Uh, you got it, uh, We're awake. Um, so the, the game I want to show you is a game called Space Team. Um, it sounds like an incredibly nerdy uh, operation, but actually it's a really, really good way of uh, coordinating students to really start thinking about what sort of communication skills uh, allow a team to work together. Um, basically what the game is, is uh, a, a game that runs on iOS and Android devices uh, where the students get to experience being a member of a space team, as we'll say. Um, it's a 38 megabyte file which you can download for free. Um, it's fantastic because you don't need a username or any account. Uh, in order to run the game. Uh, and the idea is that, that you sit in a group of either two to four um, players and you undergo a series of missions where you receive a, a whole bunch of instructions. Uh, they're highly chaotic and if you can't work as a team you're not going to be successful in playing the game. Um, the, the game runs uh, either over Bluetooth so you can get together in a little group with either your uh, iPods or uh, iPads um, uh, you know, anywhere really, or um, over a local Wi-Fi network. Unfortunately, you can't use it over the internet, and it is a bit limited in that you have to be accessing the same router. Um, I think that it's a really cool um, app in that it it forces you to to transform the way kids are thinking about communication. There's there's no way that you could use this app um, and not actually where well, you couldn't undertake a task uh, that I'm going to talk about in a moment um, in any other way. The, the Space Team app actually really takes um, the learning to a whole new level. Um, what happens, uh, and what I've got here is a photo of, of two of the screens that you could see as players, is that during the game 
um, players have instructions that pop up in front of them. Uh, so you can see that at the top there, player one has got the instruction of coddle the humming bolt, um, while player two has the instruction of increase the volt stock to two. Um, in the bottom part of, of the device, you can see a whole bunch of different controls or settings that need to be changed. And, and the important thing to, to notice there is that the, uh, the humming bolt uh, appears on player two's screen, but player one has that instruction. So the only way that you can actually succeed at this game is to speak to the other players. Uh, and if you don't speak to the other players, obviously you won't be successful. When you actually get together with a group, it becomes really, really obvious very quickly that if you don't work together and talk, um, have a bit of a system to the way you communicate, you're not going to be successful at all at playing the game. Um, I did this really successfully with my grade nine girls. It sounds like a game that might be uh, a little bit, uh, I guess, more oriented towards boys, but what, what's really fantastic about it is that as soon as you start playing, it becomes more about talking and communicating, and the fact that it's uh, set in space and a little bit nerdy becomes almost completely irrelevant. Uh, what I've got in front of you at the minute on the screen is sort of an example of, of various instructions that you might see. And as you can see on the left, you've got quite clear and obvious instructions. Um, it's simply reading words. But as you move along to the right, the instructions become more complicated and the kids have to start describing uh, images that might be unfamiliar. So they have to really think about what way do I need to describe my instruction that will be easily accessible and understandable by the people that I'm playing the game with. Um, setting up to play the game is, is actually reasonably straightforward. It is a 38 megabyte download, so you'd need to be planning a little bit ahead of time to get the, all the kids uh, to have the app. But uh, once they've got it, as long as they have like devices, so iOS with iOS and Android with Android, um, basically they can just sit next to each other or close by to each other, turn the game on. Uh, and the little people you can see in the waiting room there uh, basically represent each of the players that are connected. And as soon as the, the game recognises that there's someone nearby to them, another person pops up in the game, you then push the little green button. When everyone pushes it together, you're straight into the game. Uh, my experience with the students is that Bluetooth tends to be more reliable than using um, Wi-Fi to play it. Um, Wi-Fi, particularly on DOE networks, tends to uh, cause more problems. There's just more, uh, I guess, more opportunities for things to go wrong, especially if you're in a place where girls can connect or girls students rather can connect to more than one um, Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, the way I use it is, first of all, start out, just play the game, have a bit of fun, um, then stop and, and brainstorm some different types of communication that, that they figured hindered or helped them to play the game. Uh, usually I've found that there's one person in each group who's more interested in looking at other people's screens than their own rather than actually just talking and sharing instructions. So there's some really good conversations that come about um, in terms of what, what actually do you need to, to do in order to be a good communicator. Um, then the idea is you set up, a, a, I guess, your space team rules and regulations. So you have some agreed norms about the way that you communicate in your group. Uh, you then give it another go. Uh, and see if you can improve your high score, which the game um, keeps track of quite well for you. It, it also keeps track of the instructions that weren't successful at getting through and the instructions that were successful um, being communicated to your team members. Uh, and, and then obviously have a bit of a reflect about whether or not, uh, you know, improving your score was achieved by having a, a set of agreed norms or, or ways that you were going to participate in your discussion. Um, my experience is that it's a, a heap of fun. The, the girls that I played it with have got right into it. It became a bit of a craze uh, at in the hostel um, for a little while during winter, and I think it's gone off the boil a little bit, but the, the girls certainly have enjoyed it. Um, I think uh, it, it doesn't matter whether you're a kid or an adult, it's heaps of fun, and there's plenty to be learned from this particular app. That's all from me. If you've got any questions, I'm certainly happy to answer them. Sounds fantastic, Tim. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, I'll just uh, get everyone mics, everyone's mic back up again now. So, anyone got any questions for Tim over that fantastic bit of technology there? No? Okay, don't all speak at once. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I think you've blown my mind there, Tim, trying to uh, keep track of what was going on there. I'm going to have to re watch yeah. the uh, broadcast, I think. It is a little bit hectic. Um, and I think one thing that, that says a lot about the technology is that I almost can't tell you how amazing it is 
transform. You, you really have to experience it to appreciate what it has to offer. Yeah. Uh, fantastic, Tim. Thanks very much. Uh, absolutely superb. I think I've got my screen share working now, so um, I'll flip over to, to me, and then we've got Vaughan to follow. Yeah. Okay. Is that up on the up on the screen, everyone? We got the hangout on the. Uh, have you got everyone seeing our docio on the screen? Yeah, yep. that looks good. Yep. Okay. We'll uh, roll with that. I'll just mute your mics. Okay, so um, I got onto this after going to see Jane McPherson last year at the um, Atchby International Conference in Melbourne. She was absolutely fantastic over there and, and sold uh, the use of iDocio fantastically. So I've sort of followed in her footsteps and uh, she's coming down to our Ashburn State Conference. So really looking forward to catching up again with Jane uh, on the 12th of September. But so basically this is, this is iDocio. Um, I use it as a mark book, uh, a bit of a planner and um, as a video analysis sort of feedback tool with my classes. Um, as a front screen there, you've got my classes are set up, Fitness Fanatics, uh, Grade 7 and Outdoor Ed. I can set up reminders on the right hand side of the screen there about what I need to do. So as a first off thing, it's not too bad with the reminders. Um, we'll jump into the, the classes, sorry, up here. So if I jump into my Outdoor Ed class, um, I'll bring some things up. So just as a, an, a quick sort of scan, you can see there it's got all the all the students on the left. You can have any column at the top that you want to. So I use this one for an attendance feature for my excursions. Uh, I can annotate. I can write notes about what's happened and if someone's bought a note and they're not participating in excursion. So the use of this particular feature is fantastic. Um, for risk management and signing out at school, I was I got to the phase where I'd be sitting on the front steps getting my whole class ready to go for an excursion, I'd quickly fill out a column. You've got the ability to hide all the columns and just leave the column you want relevant. And then uh, clicking the button in the top right up there, I'm just able to email that out straight to the office as a PDF. So I could sign out, have my class list done, ready. I'd have an electronic copy and a copy at the office um, within seconds. So that sort of really changed my teaching and, and cut down an immense amount of time and, and running around going out on an excursion. So that's one thing and it's really good to track down I guess and you can see who's turned up for things and, and who hasn't. So that was our surfing lessons across to our rock climbing. So uh, one example of using it for attendance there has been, been fantastic. Um, one of the best things though that I've been able to do is use iDocio as a means of capturing video um, and then giving the assessment all in one. So this was a rock, rock climbing example So and I've recently updated iDocio, so there's a few more features in there. So I was able to capture a student. So if I click on, you might not have seen that, if I click on that uh, student number three there, down the bottom of the screen there, it brings up a little window of some notes that pertain to her. So I can click on the, the little icon of the paper clip. I can click on, on her footage. And next thing you know, I've got an instant video attached to her with her rock climbing in town. Uh, so that's been really, really useful to do for her and I can have a whole range of videos, I can attach all sorts of things to her. So just by holding my finger on on a column in a particular angle, I can download a file. So last night I was able to re-put the videos in just using a Wi-Fi share, type that address straight into my browser and basically drag and drop files that went straight through my Wi-Fi at home straight into this particular student, which was absolutely amazing. It was just fantastic to do it. You can also do that through Dropbox, Google Drive or a OneDrive. So that's that's a new feature with the, some of those in there for the Google Drive. Uh, the other bits and pieces in here, I can click up this annotation box so I can, I can type some information in there um, about the student if I wanted to and then all the student can come and type itself. So the ability which I haven't got to is I can email that out. That could get emailed straight to, as a student if I wanted it to do that. So that was a pretty cool feature as well. Uh, so that's been great and I can capture a whole lot of stuff there as it comes through uh, and I used a point scoring system there, they were in groups and teams. So that's a really fantastic feature of iDocio being able to film in that sort of situation. So that would be your one column setup, um, which is also good. Fantastic thing and I might just jump back to my grade 7 class that I had this afternoon. So. The next evolution here, that looks pretty blank, but they're not real great videos, but um, 
I was able to capture for our work samples a video in here. So there's a video of a, a movement sequence. Um, pretty basic stuff. But the next evolution I can do then, which I've done before, is get that student in the classroom to sit down, sit down with me and then have a look at her video and then type some text in as a immediate feedback. So I'm getting student self-assessment straight onto my iPad as my mark book, which is pretty, pretty good as well. In terms of actually setting up uh, some assessments, so I'll just do one really quick example. So I can click on uh, up there, I can add a column. In here, I can choose the type, so I can just call that um, assessment really easily. I can give an editor, so if I want to choose, I can have all these features up here, and you can create whatever you like. So I've, I've got a grade selector selected. I can go to grade type, and I've set up a Australian curriculum one for us to use. It then pulls up a column. I'll just change the colour of that really quickly. Um, done, and then I can double click very easily, and, and things will come up, and I'll be able to you'll be able to see what's going on. Yep, there we go. So uh, just a double click, I can just give a very quick above the standard, etc. Done, save, and you can just fill them all out as you go through. So that's just an amazing, really quick assessment tool, um, which is fantastic. If I save that, I'll jump out of that one. So to set all that up, you can get in here to your grade types in here and you can create your own and add your own. So I've done the Australian curriculum as a text. You can set up your own rubric however you want or use the ones that are already pre-designed in there. So that's fantastic as well. Um, as a planner, uh, very I don't use this much because of my life is so hectic. I tend to use my Outlook diary to do most things or it's on the hop um, in my job at the moment. But as an idea, it can look like that. Uh, you can get to your schedule. In that way, so you can see your week and when you got your classes. Obviously, I'm really busy during the week <laughs> with four classes on. Um, and then you can get into actually having a look at what was done. So if I jump last week, if you're going to do stuff in there, and there's my grade sevens, then you can type in there what you did for the lesson or as a review, or you can obviously plan ahead and do all sorts of those wonderful things that we'd love to do if we had time. So um, that sets it all up. Another feature is you've got is your calendar which is in here, and you can set up your sequences on the right there. I've set up a sequence for my classes on, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can have special events in there. You can have all sorts of things, and you can email all those, all those sorts of things out as well. Even further, you've got the resources tab, and that brings up a whole list of all the resources you've got in your iDocchio, so all the videos that you've got, all the pictures you've got, any file that you want to add to a student, you can put it all in here and do some pretty cool things with it and you can export them and open them in different things. So I can export that video to Google Drive and do all sorts of things with it once it got out. So um, as a, an assessment planning tool, it's been really useful uh, for me and my teaching so far this year. Um, my soccer, I guess one quick example was I had the students uh, just, I filmed just as a practice one day, um, filmed some soccer. So I was able to put some bibs on some students. I had a, someone there just to film and, and track a particular student using our iPod. So we're watching the girl there in the blue. Um, the next lesson in health, I, I gave some questions out and she sat next to me and we just cycled through those kids that I could have in the lesson and they just gave some feedback on their video as they watched it uh, using my iPad. So um, that was another really good feature what I talked about early on. So. I guess that's the basics of how I use iDocchio. I think it's a fantastic tool. Um, our students aren't quite into the emailing sort of sphere, really. They're more into social networking, but the ability to email things out of here would have been absolutely brilliant. So that would be an evolution. I'm sure that's happening around around the world in all sorts of other things uh, with that. There's so much more to it, but I'm running out of time. I've got all my classes in here. I can add class pictures if I want to. Um, which is great as well. I can do seating plans and all sorts of stuff. I can click the button there and go, right, that student's up. So it's a random student selector as well. So, But running out of time, so we'll leave it there. Thank you for listening. Hopefully that was a bit of an insight into using iDocchio. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's my part done and dusted. So thanks for listening. I'll just uh, unmute your mics, guys, and... Uh,
if you have any questions there. How, how big is your um, iPad memory? How, how much does <laughs> iDocio use? Uh, not the videos are really low res, which I found out today. We had a, a standard camera on another iPad filming and and the, using the iDocio, so the footage is pretty low res. Um, there's not a lot of room left on it, but I imagine if you did a lot of video, and you, you'd fill it up. The advantage I found out last night is that you can pull it all off, and then it takes a little bit of time, but you can quickly just add all the video footage back in using that Wi-Fi feature if you needed to down the track. So chuck it all on an external hard drive, and then when you need it, you can put it back in there if you wanted to. So, um, yeah, cool. Okay, um, last but not least, uh, Vaughan, over to you, mate, and uh, let's have a look at another bit of technology which I believe is called Socrative. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, tonight I just want to have a quick chat about Socrative. I'll just get you all to um, log on to www. Uh, Socrative.com um, should be able to see that. Can you see that site up there now? It's there, Vaughan. We're all set. We're all, all right. Set. So you just need to go to the student login and then type in six three six zero four nine, okay, which is my teacher room number, and then join that room. So I'll just change over to the to the teacher view, but that that room number. 636049 is up the top there. Um, so just while you're all logging in, uh, Socrative, it's a website and an app which lets you create and run quizzes and polls. Um, your students do need their own devices or at least be in a computer lab uh, to do those quizzes. Um, there's quite a few things you can do on here but just because of time tonight uh, I'm going to skip all these things and just assume that I have um, made a quiz and I'm going into class to actually start that quiz. Okay, so I just choose the quiz that I want. Um, there's a few options here as to who chooses, um, basically who who chooses when and how students get the next question. Um, so anything from student paste up to teacher paste and a few other features here which are quite self-explanatory but just because of of time tonight and the fact Kelly took so long I'll, <laughs> I'll go straight into the quiz. Okay, so so you should get a student screen that looks like this. So you just need to type in your student name. You can obviously use student numbers if that's what your school does, but then you are straight into the quiz. So a student just needs to click on the answer they think and then submit. And because I've left the feedback on, you, you'll immediately get feedback about whether you're correct or not and if not, uh, what the correct answer is. Um, second one's a true-false, so again, just click on what you think and submit, get your feedback, and then the last one is a short answer, so you'll need to actually type in your answer and then submit. So while you're doing that, uh, I'll just bring up my, my sort of teacher dashboard and I can see in real time all my students and how they're responding uh, to all the questions. So colour-coded green for correct and red for incorrect. And if you want to bring this up um, during the quiz, if, if you're doing a teacher-paced quiz or after the quiz to provide a bit of feedback, you can just click on that question and then bring up a graphic and see how many students have answered um, that question. So hypothetically, if you saw that a heap of students had incorrectly answered C here, um, that's a really good graphic for a teachable moment about the difference between Australia and Austria, for example. Uh, fairly similar graphic with the true-false. In terms of the short answer, obviously students have actually written uh, answers in here, so you've got the options of showing names or just showing answers uh, if you want to see what students have written but, but still uh, let them keep that anonymity. So it looks like uh, the guru Nathan Horne's got the vote there. Um, so, sorry Tim, I'll, I'll just finish that quiz up now just because of uh, the time limit. Um, so once you finish it, you've got a few options as to how you want the results. Um, for tonight, I'm just going to choose download and choose the whole class and the individual, but you can see there are some other options there. Um, and then I'll just submit that. So I'm just going to show you a couple of the different output, uh, which is 
one of the reasons that I that I really like Socrative. So basically, the first one it does is just a, a class spreadsheet. So I've got all my students in column A here, their total score, number of correct answers, and then what they've actually answered for all the different questions. So obviously, this is just a short little demonstration quiz, but if you had say 50 different multiple choice questions going all the way along here, uh, the fact that Socrative will actually work out their score for you immediately is going to save you a lot of time, um, and that's something I really like about it. Uh, the second thing, if I just go, it also gives you a, an actual sort of output for each individual student if you select that. Okay, so if, for every student it gives you basically what they answered for each question and whether it was correct or not. So this is perfect for just chucking straight into a folder or a portfolio um, for that student, maybe even emailing it straight back to them so they've got that immediate feedback. Um, also great to take to parent-teacher night as you know, evidence of, of that student's learning. Um, so basically those two different outputs are one of the main reasons that I like um, Socrative so much and, and do use it uh, in class because it just saves me a, a lot of time. Uh, I think I'll stop there just because I'm trying to keep within the, uh, within, <laughs> within the time limit unlike some people <laughs> on Thanks, Yeah, good on you mate. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Um, but yeah, so in, if, if, if we do this again, I'm, I'll, I'll probably show people a few other different things about, about Socrative, but that's just, just the main thing there for tonight. So any questions? Uh, not for me, mate. Do you have kids accessing that uh, in the classroom on their phones and things like that? Yeah, so predominantly my students just bring iPhones to class. Um, some have iPads, but not many. Um, yep. So. So depending on what sort of devices your school had, that's what they could use. Um, otherwise, I've, I've had students talk about the fact they could just take their whole class to a computer lab and actually run it um, through through the website. So, uh, yeah, yeah you, you've certainly got a lot of options there. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And did you know you can change your room name to your own name as well? I didn't know that, and I, ha I haven't bothered to try that, but I might do that in future, yeah. Yeah, up on the top right hand side near the menu, uh, young Anita put me onto that one a couple of weeks ago. Yep. So you yeah, can just so click on my, that. I saw a group rooms like called Mrs. Welsh's class or something like that, so you can make it quite specific so that the students will actually remember it. Yeah, I, I try not to put my surname in anything though, because then my <laughs> students can't do anything with it, so <laughs> I've just kept mine as, as the number for now, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely look into that. Yeah, cool. No, excellent. Well, thanks for sharing, Vaughan. That was uh, that was very short and sweet compared to the uh, the previous one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that that wraps up our first Atchbataz hangout, everybody. So thank you for the people that were viewing this online. We've had a few viewers there, and thank you, Juanita, Tim, Guy, and Vaughan for sharing the use of technology. And uh, we'll have this up on up on uh, Facebook for Atchbar and the Twitter account everything in the next uh, next half an hour so we can share it and everyone can have a look and see what the future of professional learning holds. And uh, the next one we're going to host from the president of Atchford's House, Tim Medwin, so um, we'll be doing that post the conference and we're also looking at doing exactly what we've done with Nathan Horn and his IT session at the uh, Atchford conference. So um, stay tuned for some more coming from Atchford, Tasmania. But uh, for a Wednesday night, that uh, after almost an hour of getting this right and me talking for way too long, <laughs> it's uh, time to sign off. So uh, thank you, everyone, and I'll stop the broadcast. <laughs>